Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. Welcome to this latest episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. In this episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner, what I'd like to talk to you about is Chassis Sim for Formula SAE slash Formula Student. So if you're a student, this one is just for you. And it really gives me a lot of pleasure to present this to you today because Obviously, there's been the Dan's Vehicle Dynamics um, uh, corner thread on the Formula Student website. Obviously, I've had a, uh, uh, quite a few in uh, uh, inquiries about um, how to use um, Chassis Sim for Formula Student. And while these have been pie uh, piecemeal and I've been giving advice separately to individual students, and they've obviously been um, applying Chassis Sim and applying it very, very well, I actually think now is the time to make this knowledge uh, uh, to, to make this knowledge now public, but more importantly, to give all of you students who are going to be watching this the tools to be able to use high-end simulations that professional motorsport teams use, so you can use as a really good basis for doing what you do with Formula Student with regards to designing the car and running the car and getting the most out of it. So let's get started. One of the greatest myths that I see about Chassis Sim for Formula Student is, well, isn't Chassis Sim just for professional motorsport teams? Isn't it just for Formula cars or high-end touring cars? Well, no. I mean, if you look at what Chassis Sim is capable of, whether it be a road car or a Formula Student car, all the techniques that you use um, in driving Chassis Sim for in a professional motorsport um, application uh, environment is just as applicable for Formula um, SAE. And I'm not sort of, t and I am not talking theory on this. This has been used in anger in Formula Student. So I'm going to talk to you about the why, and more importantly, I'm going to show you the how. Okay, why chassis sim for Formula SAE? First things first, this is full transient multi-body vehicle dynamic simulation. If anything, one of the real powers of chassis sim is the fact that it encapsulates a very high-end multi-body vehicle dynamic tool with a very, very focused automotive front end. That to me is one of the biggest powers that chassis sim brings to the party. The other thing it brings to the party it has toolboxes that can, know, uh, that can reverse engineer vehicle parameters, and in particular, it can reverse engineer tyre parameters, and that is of really, really critical importance, particularly um, if you're running a car where the tyres are a total black box. It can export third-party data. It can export to third-party um, data acquisition packages, and it's a great tool for exploring uh, design concepts. And it has industry standard correlation. When it comes to correlation. Chassis sim, e, uh, uh, chassis sim is the benchmark you compare against, and I just don't say that because I have a vested financial interest in doing so. I say that because I have lost count of the number of times, a number of different formulas that chassis sim has been applied across, and you cannot tell the difference between simulated and actual data. So what we've got here, actual is red, simulated is black, so we've got speed, throttle, dam front dampers, rear dampers, steer, lateral longitudinal G, front rear rear roll. This is the resonant power that you're going to have uh, that, uh, that uh, you're going to um, have in, uh, in relation um, to if you start to use chassis sim on your Formula Student car. Okay, so enough with the talking. Let's give you a practical demo. Okay, so what I've got here is that I've opened up chassis sim and I've selected the Formula Student template. Now, when you roll out Chassis Sim, one of the things that um, comes in the uh, install shield with Chassis Sim is Formula SAE tips and tricks. So you, uh, uh, you open that up, and there's some tips and tricks in here about how to set up the Chassis Sim environment, like setting up your units. But more importantly, the major thing that you're going to do with Formula Student and Formula SAE, because the tracks you're going to be running on are so much tighter than what you would have for a typical road car or a race car, there's just a simple adjustment that you need to do. And what you need to do, and as you can see here, you're going to go into circuit modeling options and change the values to the values that are illustrated here. Let me illustrate that. So I'll go into circuit and I'll go into modeling options. And now I'm just going to change that to 0.08, 0.08, and 0.08, and I'm going to um, click on it, and what I'm going to do is I'll now click on OK, 
and that has now applied uh, and what that has done is that has now applied the uh, that that is now basically applied the chassis sim cornering algorithm so it can read the tight curvatures that you're going to see with a typical formula um, with a typical formula student um, uh, track that you'll run whether it be a motocross a, a, a slalom uh, or a slalom course so let's now go through and uh, show you how to roll out a, a and, and show you just how straightforward it is to get a basic formula student um, simulation happening so what I'm going to do is yes, I've got my formula student um, uh, template in there. So what I'm going to do is let me just go to my example folder. Okay, so I'm going to load in my car file. And now, just as as if I was um, uh, doing exactly the same thing with a, um, with a formula car or a touring car, I've gone through and I've um, made a preloaded. Um, uh, I've got a uh, preloaded monster file um, uh, from uh, some uh, customer data. So I'll go to um, circuit, create filter curvature file. I'll click on raw curvature uh, raw curvature file. I'll import that. I'll click here if you're using the monster file. I'm going to use a, mo I'm gonna use a moving uh, average filter. I'm going to click on output curvature file and I'll go track formula SAE example and I'm going to click on OK and that's created my curvature file and also I can now do exactly the same th and as, uh, if I'm going to and just to show you what that looks like if we go into circuit at a variable group factors and import curvature for exa examples again that's your asylum course of what you've just been through generated by actual data let's now go through and generate a monster file so I'm sorry I should say a bump profile so We'll go to Bump Profile Modeling. I'll click here to add the Monster Import file. I'll create my Bump Profile. I'll click here to specify my Bump Profile location. I'll choose Start on that. And I will go Bump Profile Formula SAE Example. I'm going to um, go through, just do a typical, um, uh, b uh, uh, do my typical bump scale settings. I might set that to about 0.3. I might use my bump scale iterations. I'll probably just set that to 2 for the time being because obviously this particular example, just to protect, uh, uh, protect customer confidentiality, this is not the same car file that matches to their data. Um, but is in terms of what you'll be doing, you'll be doing exactly the same thing. So I'll click on OK. And that's going to go through, and uh, do, uh, that's going to go through and do its thing. So that'll just take uh, a moment while um, it's uh, while it's um, doing the bump profiling. Okay, so it's now going through doing the auto bump scaling, and now that has done. What I will do is let me just double check. Uh, that the fact I've got something pretty uh, uh, that I've got something useful in here. So here are pretty much my bump. Pro uh, that's the bump profile I've created. So now I've created a curvature file and a bump profile. Now let me show you what that's going to look like. So we're going to go to circuit circuit data. I'm going to load in my curvature file. I'm going to load in my bump profile. I'm going to click on OK, and I'm going to simulate. I'm going to go to data logging options, and I'm going to export this out. Just for the sake of the argument, I'll export it out to MoTeC. And now I'm going to go Formula SAE example. Formula SAE circuit. And I'm just going to go demo, demo. And now I'm going to click on data file output. I'm just going to create a new folder here called data. I'm just doing this more just for housekeeping. Now I'm going to call, call that Formula SAE example. I'm going to click on OK. Go to the Start menu. Click on Start Simulation, and now it's going to go through and do a complete simulate, uh, a complete simulated lap, complete with the bumps of your car file from the actual data that you have recorded. So we'll just let that do its thing. Okay, so it's now going to go through, do its thing, and there is your predicted lap time, which is a 65.62. But the real payoff here is going in 
to our actual data, to the data we've just uh, uh, to um, the data that we've just recorded. And there you go. Here is your simulated lap that you can record uh, that you can plot against actual data, and this. Ladies and gentlemen, is what makes Chassis Sim such a powerful tool. So you've got your things like your dam you've got things uh, you've got things such as your dampers, your ride heights, para uh, parameters such as what your suspension geometry is, what your cambers, what your roll sensors were all uh, what you're all doing. All of that is there for you to take full advantage of. Now. Just remember, particularly when it comes to comparing to actual data, obviously, formula student being formula student, you're never going to achieve 150% uh, perfect correlation with the speed, uh, with, uh, the speed trace. But more importantly, you've got a really good platform to start answering some pretty serious questions about um, uh, your car. Now, moving on to actually rolling this out, the best way to start is the online simulation. Now, for all intents and purposes, the online simulation is, for all intents and purposes, identical to the standalone versions of Chassis Sim. It just uses our online server as the internet dongle, and all it keeps a track on is how many credits are you using. Now, we've just introduced packages to use this by the month. We've also got reduced rates for, uh, but we're also going to do reduced rates for students. I realise that once upon a time I used to be an undergraduate as well, and I know all too well that... Um, Undergraduate, uh, that undergraduates and early postgraduates aren't exactly flush with money, so this is something that um, we are. Uh, this is something that where we at Chessim are very, very acutely aware of. Because more importantly, we want you guys to actually start using this and to really explore for yourself what Chassis Sim is truly capable of. So, the best way to start now. E, uh, the best way to start now is go to the chassis uh, uh, go to the chassis sim website and as you can see here we've got some um, the online simulation tab there you obviously fill in um, if you're a new user you fill in these uh, specifics it'll take you into the chassis sim portal where you can download chassis sim professional online and um, as we did uh, as um, uh, we um, as we discussed before Look, we're quite happy to give you your first month for free because, bottom line, our priority is to make sure that you will um, uh, uh, that you can get uh, that um, you get chassis sim into your hands and you find and you start producing results like this for uh, uh, results like this uh, uh, for yourself. So, um, get rolling with sha uh, uh, get rolling with chassis sim. If you have um, any questions, obviously there's the Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner. I'm more than happy to answer any queries that you might have. Also, too, um, and if I'm not uh, monitoring that, I'm probably busy with other stuff. So, obviously, email me at um, so email me at info at chassisim.com. But more importantly, our priority is to get chassis sim into your hands, and so that you uh, so that you can discover for yourself just what a powerful tool this is. So. Give this a run. Obviously, when you get going with Chassis Sim, uh, particularly if you're just signing up, shoot me a note um, to info at chassisim.com that um, you're a member of a Formula Student team, or even fill in the um, de or even fill in the professional team's um, uh, demo section, just saying that you've um, seen um, this particular video. I'll set you up with some credits so you're good to go and find out for yourself just what a powerful tool Chassis Sim is. And I look forward to catching you on the next episode of Dan's Vehicle Dynamics Corner.